My name is Mandy. And my name is Elaine. Today we're going to talk about habit reversal training with body focused repetitive behaviors. Body focused repetitive behaviors are habits that are focused on the body. Um, if they happen at a high frequency or with intensity, they can cause physical and psychosocial problems. They are considered disorders if they become debilitating. They can be found in the DSM-5 under obsessive compulsive related disorders. Trichotillomania and excoriation are frequently characterized as body focused repetitive behaviors. The diagnostic criteria for hair pulling and skin picking are interchangeable. You would, the client would need to um, recurrently be pulling out their hair resulting in hair loss. They need to have repeated attempts to decrease the hair pulling or skin picking. The hair pulling causes clinical significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, and other important areas of functioning. The hair pulling <clears throat> or skin picking is not attributable to any other medical condition. The hair pulling is not better explained by the symptoms of another medical disorder. Diagnostic criteria A, um, the hair and pulling and skin picking can be pulled from any region of the body. The hair locations can change over time and the amount of time varies per individual. It is not required that the hair pulling lead to hair loss, however, it is not required that the hair loss be noticeable. It does not have to be noticeable due to some individuals pulling hair from all over one site causing hair loss may not be clearly visible. For diagnostic C, examples of the type of distress the individual may feel is loss of control, embarrassment, and shame. Individuals with Skin picking or hair pulling disorder usually admit to hair pulling or skin picking, so dermatological diagnosis is seldom needed. As far as development for trichotillomania and excoriation, they both predominantly begin during adolescence around uh, puberty. Uh, it commonly concurs or is after puberty. It's usually found to be chronic if not treated. Um, it can come and go for weeks at a time, months, or even years. Risk factors for trichotillomania and excoriation are the same. Uh, there's evidence that supports that genetic vulnerability associated with OCD or other excessive habit-related um, disorders. Uh, environmental factors such as social learning. Uh, trichotillomania is similar across cultures, however, there's less evidence in non-Western regions. As far as co comorbidity, um, the majority of individuals have at least one other habit, um, such as nail picking, um, nail biting, uh, lip chewing. Uh, they also can be co comorbid with uh, major depressive disorder, anxiety, and um, other obsessive compulsive disorders. Habit reversal training is the most empirically supported treatment for body focused repetitive behaviors. It is used to reverse the positive reinforcements of pulling behaviors or skin picking. The original form of habit reversal training consists of four phases and 13 components. The four phases are awareness training, competing response training, motivation enhancement, and generalization training. There are also simplified versions that consists of awareness training, competing response training, and social support. Awareness training is where the client learns to become aware of each instance of their hair pulling, helping them recognize the behavior outside of the session. Response description is where the client describes in detail each occurrence of the behavior while looking in a mirror. Response detection, therapist informs clients when they engage in the behavior until the client can detect each occurrence without assistance. Early warning. The client practices identifying the earliest signs of the target behavior. Situation awareness. The client identifies all of the persons around whom the behavior occurred and the places and situations. Identifying sensations, the feelings and thoughts preceding the habit. Competing response training. The client learns to engage in an incompatible behavior contingent on hair pulling. The client chooses a behavior involving the hands that the client can carry out one minute when the behavior occurs. 
This should be easy to carry out physically, incompatible with behavior, and inconspicuous. Engage in the client's interests. Clients should check in with themselves to determine if they desire to perform the behavior after about doing one minute of competing response. If they continue to have the desire to do the behavior, then they need to repeat the competing response until the desire has passed. Motivation Enhancement Habit and Convenience Review The client reviews all the problems and discomforts that were caused by the habit, social support procedure. Family and friends praise the client for non-occurrence of the behavior and remind the client to practice competing response. Public display. The client demonstrates to others that they can control target behavior. Generalization training. Symbolic rehearsal. The client imagines themselves in different situations that were identified in the awareness phase. Social support. Parents encourage verbal praise and reinforcement for a successful completion of competing response behaviors. Stimulus control. Identify internal and external stimuli. Some examples of stimuli would be visual. For instance, if the client had the urge to perform the behavior in the bathroom, they would use dim lining. Also, it can be location, like specifically on the couch while I'm watching TV, so it would be encouraged that the client would avoid that location at all possible. For the first session, you will be focusing on functional assessment, standardized assessment, and assessment of comorbidity. Functional assessment is a time when you would gather information from the client and they would describe in detail on their pulling behaviors. You could ask, please describe how you pull your hair. What do you do with your hair after you pull it? What are you thinking or feeling when you have the urge to perform your behavior? And show me exactly how you pull your hair. Also during session one, we are going to sign homework. The client is to track the time, the number of frequencies, the location, and if they had the ability to resist the urge. It is very important for the client to track because sometimes that is the only way we can get direct behavioral strategies and the goal is to get the client to record as soon as they realize they are performing the behavior. During session one, you will also have the client do ABC recording. Now, this is focusing on the thoughts and feelings before and during the um, behavior. This is a little more in depth, so we only ask the client to do this once a day or once a week. Also during session one, we are going to assign a social support person. This can be a parent, a teacher, a social worker, just anyone that works directly with the child on a daily basis and the child feel com is comfortable enough with them to open up and discuss their polling behaviors. During session two, you're going to collect and review the homework. You will graph this for the client so they can see the frequency of the time they perform the behavior and how often they were able to resist the urge. You're going to do an inconvenience review, and this is going to be where you openly discuss with the client how often this behavior has embarrassed them, prevented them from doing things that they wanted, or just overall um, any negative impact it has had on them. You're also going to do um, more awareness training with the client, and then they're going to have a chance to describe um, pulling behaviors again. And this is not gonna be as in detailed as the first session, but this just gives them a chance to open up and describe something that they might've forgotten during session one. Session three and beyond are considered booster sessions. So there's not a specific number of sessions you need for HRT to be successful. In session three, you are going to graph and collect the homework like you have been doing, showing the number of frequencies and how often the client has been able to resist the urge. You're going to review the treatment and problem solving skills that they have. You're going to compare report questionnaire results and discuss their progress. You're also going to identify issues with completing homework and then review HRT treatment components with the client and the social support one more time. Uh, if I were a client, my habit would probably be hair twirling or playing with my hair. So I would need to come up with a competing response. So uh, it would be important for me to choose my competing response. So I would choose folding my hands, um, interlocking them, um, Any time that I feel the urge or um, start to even play with my hair or tw twirl it. So. It's very important for the social support person to be able to recognize and pay attention to the client just to verbally praise and motivate them to continue using their competing response behaviors. You did a fantastic job of using your computer response training.
Thank you. It is very important for the clinician to explain the biopsychosocial and behavioral models for this. They need to focus on the positive and negative reinforcements, nonspecific neurobiological vulnerabilities. It is also very important, especially for young children and adolescents, to externalize their behavior. This helps minimize shame and embarrassment. It will reduce family conflict and blame. And you can simply do this by just giving it a nickname. Relapse prevention would be focusing on the client's achievements and gains, quizzing the clients, normalizing post-treatment urges, and making a plan that is for relapsing and lifestyle changes.